Jesus spoke to them again. I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Where is this bus? The Youth Detention Center. You mean juvie? Yes, juveniles. Kids who committed crimes. Uh, I don't get it, boss. The juvies are flying the Bible copter? No, you buffoon. I've been monitoring the surveillance camera for over three months. Bible Man visits the juvies for one hour every Wednesday afternoon. So you know when Bible Man's coming? Exactly. Well, uh, isn't today Wednesday? You're posing that as a question worries me. But yes, yes, it is. Now listen close. You must follow my plan precisely. So Logan, did you pick a verse to memorize for Bible Man today? Yep, John 8, 12. I won't forget. That's a beautiful passage, Logan. Any reason you picked that one? I don't know. I guess it makes me feel safe since, you know, what happened to Austin and all. I'm sure Bible Man would love to hear it. Is Bible Man really gonna be there? Sure is. He visits your brother at the Youth Detention Center every Wednesday. So Bible Man is teaching Austin about Jesus now? Yes. Your brother already knew about Jesus from when he would come to church with your family, but he never accepted the love of Christ into his heart. Do you think he has now? Sometimes something bad has to happen to someone before they can open their hearts. That's why we've been praying for Austin. I've been praying for him every day. And the Lord has answered those prayers by bringing Bible Man into Austin's life. So you see, Logan, your prayers are pretty powerful stuff. I didn't hear your helicopter land. That's because we used our teleporters today. Ha ha, I seriously doubt that. Hmm. You know the drill. Weapons and electronics in here. Your group is ready back there. Good afternoon, Officer Williams. Officer Williams is off sick. We'll say a prayer for a speedy recovery then. Tony, Morgan, Jimmy, Austin, my man. Hey, hi, what's up? Yo. Oh, uh, uh, yo to you too. So, is everything all right, guys? Yup, yeah, cool, sure. I can't help but notice none of you brought your Bibles with you today. Lost mine. I don't know. Forgot. I doubt we'll be needing those anymore. Did you say doubt? Purpose of your visit? Oh, I'm here to help. Destroy Bible Man. Yes, I have been expecting you. <laughs> Good. I believe you have something for me, my dear? Yes! Uh, I mean, <laughs> thank you, my lady. John 8, 12. John 8, 12. John 8, 12. John 8, 12. Pastor Lewis with Logan Moore to visit his brother Austin Moore. Bible man made all the arrangements. You're early. I'll wait over there. Thank you. Let's go, Logan. So, how do you guys know Bible man? Clearly, something has changed since the last time Cypher and I were here. I'm sensing a lot of doubt in this room that wasn't here before. But we have to remember that faith is how we conquer doubt. 
Fewer stories illustrate this better than in Matthew 14, the story of Jesus and Peter walking on water. One day, after preaching to over 5,000 people, Jesus wanted to pray alone. So he sent Peter and the disciples ahead in a boat. While Jesus was up the hill praying, the winds picked up and he saw a storm blowing over the lake. So he went to help his friends. The disciples saw somebody walking towards them on the water. They were terrified and shouted, it's a ghost. Jesus knew they were freaking out. So he told them, have courage. It is I, don't be afraid. But Peter was the only one with enough faith to reply, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus replied with one word, come. So Peter did. He climbed out of the boat and started walking on the water towards Jesus. Peter almost made it to Jesus. But then Peter took his eyes off Jesus. He doubted and became afraid of the storm again. So he began to sink. Lord, save me, he cried out. And Jesus caught him. Then he said to Peter, you of little faith, why did you doubt? You see, Peter exercised his faith by trusting and keeping his eyes on Jesus. But as soon as we lose sight of Jesus in our hearts and in our minds, we open the door for the enemy, for doubt to creep in. Huh? How did we? What happened? Bible man? Bravo, Bible man. Shadow of doubt. I was beginning to wonder when you'd come out of hiding. Always the hero, aren't you, Bible man? But tell me, now that you're unarmed, defenseless, and unable to call for help, do you have any doubts, hero? 